Hi guys, Azure Ace here and welcome back to another Dragon Ball Super episode discussion and oh my god this episode man, this episode was top tier Dragon Ball, this was top 5 episodes of Dragon Ball Super easily, so much happened in this episode like we had an amazing, amazing Goku rage moment. We had like our first Trunks rage moment. Oh, it's absolutely mental what happened in this episode. Can't wait to get into it. But here we go as we get into episode 61 of Dragon Ball Super. <laughs> As we get into the episode, we start off from the last episode ended off, we have Zamasu and Black quickly going over the revelation at the end of the last episode that Zamasu is in fact Goku, or he is Zamasu in Goku's body, as they get into like the same fighting stance and they join their keys into this massive, you know, supernova that we saw from the last episode previews, or the, the episode previews for this episode I mean. And it was just like that massive supernova ball of burning key thing that we saw. And the fight begins. Goku, Vegeta and Trunks immediately go Super Saiyan Blue and Super Saiyan 2 respectively. Goku rushes up and catches Amasu in the face, blowing his head off. But it just returns and then Black jumps out of nowhere, slashing down with his aura blade. But Goku catches it. However, it is caught off guard and kicked and sent flying into a building. Trunks flies down to see if he's okay, which he is, and Goku Black then explains his entire origin story, which is very interesting as it, and is just like completely dumbfounded the entire community because it's so, so confusing what actually happens. He explains that he, as the present day Samasu, managed to murder Gowasu and take both his Patara and a Time Ring, elevating him to a Kaioshin. Then he used the Super Dragon Balls to switch bodies with Goku, then used the Time Ring to win to Trunks' his timeline, killing the Goasu of the future and meeting the Zamasu of the future, the one we know to be the immortal Zamasu, and with Black, they even have this like really awkward hug which is kind of funny. Zamasu also adds that he then used the Super Dragon Balls to become immortal, and get this, this is very, very interesting as well. After meeting up with future Zamasu, both he and Goku Black destroyed the Super Dragon Balls. But what Super Dragon Balls did they destroy the main timeline Dragon Balls? Did they destroy the future timeline Dragon Balls? It's never ever specified anywhere where they actually destroyed the Dragon Balls, whether it's in you know, the main timeline, the future timeline, or another timeline entirely. Like, I didn't even know that it was possible to destroy the Dragon Balls. I mean, I guess you can, but the Super Dragon Balls are planet-sized things, like, they gotta be hard to destroy. But then Goku Black finally confirms what we all knew from the manga, now in the anime's continuity, that he does, in fact, go and kill all of the Kaioshins and all of the universes, subsequently killing all of the Gods of Destruction as well, and now, with the gods out of the way, they can proceed with the Zero Mortals plan. A plan to wipe out all of the Ningen, mortals, humans, whatever you guys want to call them. They then get into a fighting stance and the battle continues as Goku, Vegeta and Trunks start firing a volley of key blasts at them. But Zamasu blocks them, Goku, Vegeta and Trunks all fly in for attacks against Black, but he completely dodges all of them flawlessly and pummels them all to the ground as Zamasu pummels Goku to the ground and fires key blasts at him. Trunks and Vegeta continue the fight with Black but are both knocked into a building, a lot like in the Bojack movie if you guys remember that. And then, oh man this is, wow this is the first of two absolutely amazing rage moments that makes this one of the best episodes of Super we've had yet. Easily top 5, like I said. Zamasu and Black literally have Goku pinned against the wall as Zamasu asks if Goku wants to know what happened to his family. 
So Mafsi begins to explain what happened. He switched bodies with Goku, who was farming with Goten at the time. So it was really kind of weird seeing Zamasu's body and the farmer clothing that Goku wears. We see Goten then flying over with Chi Chi to see Goku as Black appears behind them as we see him with the Aura Blade, who then kills Goku in front of Goten and Chi Chi. Black then literally stabs through Zamasu and gets Goku right in the stomach with the Aura Blade and we just, we see one of the most horrifying and sad scenes of this arc and of Super in general, up there with Future Bomber's death, as we see Black flying in for Goten and Chi Chi and we just, we hear their like screams and it like made me shiver. And Black just murders them in cold blood. Black murdered the Sun family. That in itself, if like you didn't hate Black and Zamasu before, surely you hate them now. They've killed future Bulma, and now they've killed Goku, Chi Chi, and Goten in another timeline. That's absolutely crazy. And now we see Goku, and he is angry. He is furious. His key flares up dramatically and he breaks the aura blade and he lets his key down and man this is amazing. He moves so fast and starts smashing black with multiple punches as he flies up with him and punches him into a building. Zamasu appears and tries to fire a key blast at Goku but Goku just pummels him down and starts firing a volley of key blasts at him and then Black reappears and Goku absolutely eats his punch and then pummels him with a left and a right in the stomach and finishing with a knee and just oh it's just so amazing and then Black flies up again and fires another key blast at Goku and Goku's just going in he pummels Black down again and uses the instant transmission to go in front of Zamasu <laughs> he literally backhands this fool into a building which is absolutely amazing I love it so much he walks over to Black who seems to be knocked out cold but this is where Goku's just amazing scenes ends as he goes in for a punch as Black catches his hand blasting Goku right through the chest with a key blast as Black now has almost like a katana of sorts as his aura blade and his he fires like multiple little like daggers I guess of key that just impale Goku and then explode sending Goku down for the count making him lose his form Trunks and Vegeta are up next as Trunks tells Vegeta he's going to take on Black and Vegeta tells him not to, he's not strong enough but I have major, major respect for Trunks man like he's like, I won't know if I don't try I'm gonna like get destroyed anyway but I might as well try then Black says something Black says that Trunks has made a sin far worse than what he has he has broken the laws of time and broken like the taboo of the gods and by going back to the past Trunks made Zamasu want to destroy humans for breaking that law so if Trunks had never went back to the past to give Goku the medicine this would have never have happened so in a way this is Trunks' fault it's all a time paradox because if Trunks never went back to save the Z Fighters Black would have never been created but then Trunks went back because of Black see what I'm saying? Trunks then goes up to fight Black and well obviously he gets just destroyed but then this is just what this I'm pretty sure this destroyed Twitter but all I can say is this is amazing Desperate Assault starts playing that's the music that plays when Black stabs a Vegeta and when Trunks goes in to fight Black for the first time when we think Mai gets killed and he's just consumed by anger he is like I'm fine with being a sinner and he punches the ground so hard that literally tons of cracks appear on the ground and he is angry as all hell man if you thought Goku was angry a moment ago when he was fighting Zamasu in black just wait for this he is like he's powering up immensely he has no pupils in his eyes his eyes are just plain white and I hate to say it 
It's a lot like Broly, he's completely consumed by his anger, his key flares up dramatically going as high as the damn sky, and we were all left here sitting thinking, oh god, he's going Super Saiyan 3, he's going Super Saiyan 3, he powers up even more and that blue electricity starts sparking all around him when he's like, he's going Super Saiyan 3, his arms and legs buff up like Super Saiyan grade 2, and he's screaming like all oh, hell, there's electricity pulsing everywhere, and then we see his hair, it's blue for a split moment, however the blueness almost like seeps into him like he's absorbing it, the earth is shaking with every step he takes, it's so amazing, this is the big kicker, we get to see the form, and he has a blue aura, and on top of that aura, he also has his normal Super Saiyan aura, but is it? It's not. More on that in the overall thoughts, as Trunks comes face to face against Black and Zamasu with the episode ending there. But now, it's time for my overall thoughts on this episode. <laughs> what can I say? This episode was absolutely amazing. Amazing, this episode, man. You know, Nah, the animation was a bit iffy in this one to be honest, first time in a long time it's been iffy like that. Music, absolutely on point, Sumitomo, what a beautiful man that guy has been ever since this arc started with music. So the first thing I want to bring up, Goku's Rage Boost. Oh my god, it's been so long since we've seen Goku that angry. Goku is like the one true character you do not want to get angry once he gets angry he is going to murder you like it's absolutely insane how serious and focused Goku becomes when he gets into such an angered state like that and I'm surprised that you know he didn't last longer than he actually did like he was absolutely destroying Black and Zamasu by himself but I guess that rage boost sort of wore off eventually a lot like Vegeta's rage boost wore off against Beerus in the Battle of Gods arc eventually. But it's, it's so great to see Goku mad like that again. We haven't seen him like that since like he went Super Saiyan for the first time in the Frieza arc. Like it's been such a long time since we've seen him seriously get angry like that. But the next thing I want to talk about is the whole time paradox situation we've got going on here with, you know, like, Black is the reason why Trunks went back to the past to tell them about Goku Black's existence, but because Trunks went back to the past and told them about Goku Black, that led to the creation of Goku Black because Black came back to fight Goku and then Goku went to fight Zamasu, it's very very confusing but in the description below I have a video to one of Geekdom 101's videos that he put out very recently with Laughing Stop Media. He and Laughing Stop Media have done a very very good job of explaining the whole time paradox situation that's going on with the Future Trunks arc right now. It's very good, I highly recommend going and seeing that and just watching it over a few times to just completely get this because it's a very very confusing subject and really it's going to take a while for everyone to wrap their heads around it. And finally, what else can I talk about other than Trunks' new form? What is it? How strong is it? And does it really mean anything? Because it did sort of look like he just went into like a powered up Super Saiyan Grade 2 state. I don't know but like I said with the whole shape of his aura thing, if you look at the shape of it and then look at the shape of a Super Saiyan Blue's aura, they are very strikingly similar. So did he ascend to Super Saiyan Blue? Is it like a situation with, you know, Gohan in the Room of Spirit and Time or the Hyperbolic Time Chamber back in the Cell Saga? He went Super Saiyan 2 for like a split moment then transformed back to Super Saiyan. Did that happen here? Did we see uh, Trunks go Super Saiyan Blue for a split moment and then return to this new sort of hybrid state between a Super Saiyan Grade 2 and a Super Saiyan Blue? Because it seems like the auras of both Super Saiyan and Super Saiyan Blue are inverse because on the outside we see the yellow aura obviously, 
But on the inside, around about Trunk, the edge of Trunks' character, we can see the blue aura pretty significantly there. So on the normal Super Saiyan Blue, there's a lot of blue aura on the outside, but there's yellow aura on the inside. And another thing that uh, MJ Geekless TV pointed out is that he has a lot of white particles floating around him. Now the thing about that is, that is on Super Saiyan Blue as well. There's a lot of white particles floating around the Super Saiyan Blue aura. So what I think has happened here is that maybe during uh, Vegeta and Trunks' training in episode 54 and possibly before that, when you know, Goku is going to Universe 10 and such to search for Zamasu or during the time when Bulma was repairing the time machine maybe Vegeta taught Trunks about God Key maybe he bestowed him a piece of God Key we've seen in the past, we've seen people giving normal key we've seen people giving Genki for the Genki Dama or the Super Spirit Bomb we've seen people give key a lot so it stands to reason that maybe people can give God Key as well. It would make sense, but then again, if they could do that, everyone would be given God Key by this point. So it's really interesting to see how uh, Trunks has this almost God Key-like state now. Maybe he has God Key, maybe he was, you know, given it by Vegeta so that at some point his rage would build up and it would unleash the God Key and well, in fact, now that I say that, it's actually probably not that because uh, Super Saiyan Blue, in essence, is the control of God Key. The reason why Trunks couldn't sustain Super Saiyan Blue if he did go Super Saiyan Blue in that moment is because he is angered, he is consumed by his hatred toward Black, he isn't controlling his key, he is letting it all out, he is not allowing the key to sort of sink with him, meaning he can't sustain the Super Saiyan Blue state and, you know, it sort of dissipated. His hair turned from blue back to yellow. That is my thoughts on the whole new Trunks form thing. No clue how strong it's going to be, but by the next episode previews, which you're going to see very soon, he pretty much holds his ground against Black for a very long time. Looks like he's putting up one hell of a fight against Black. Never see him fighting Zamasu in that episode preview. But now with the overall thoughts out of the way, it's time to get into the previews as we come to episode 62 entitled I Will Protect the World, Trunks' Angry Superpower Explosion. Some mouthful of a title we got there, but the previews began showing off Trunks' new form and he is tearing into black. He doesn't care about his attacks at all, he's just eating them up. And it also shows back in the main timeline with Chi Chi looking like she's scolding Krillin and also we get to see many other characters return. We get to see Goten finally return with Kid Trunks, we get to see Gohan finally return well, who will surely learn about what's happening now that he is coming back and may get some use in this arc after all. Or possibly the next arc after going off the leaks we got earlier this week, it doesn't look like he's going to be in it. We also see that Whis and Beerus are back in Universe 10 talking with Gowasu, so they'll likely be trying to maybe discern what Gowasu thinks of the situation. And obviously, we get to see Piccolo, which if you guys have seen the leaks, and major spoilers here, you will know that Piccolo is going to suggest to Goku that he will learn a move that can possibly work against Zamasu and that is going to lead into the next episode as we do see Master Roshi who will be returning to teach Goku this move as the previews end there but nevertheless if you guys like this video please leave a like and a comment in the comment section below share this amongst your friends I've been Azraeus and thank you for coming to the video it is I, Vegeta, the Prince of All Saiyans, and you're watching Azura Ace. Subscribe for more content like this one.